Bears got injury news that was not good. Tevin Jenkins is going to possibly miss up to six weeks. We're going to talk about that. And who's probably going to step up in his absence? We're also going to talk about Dante Foreman and if he's living up to expectations and if Roshan Johnson is on the precipice of taking over that running back two position. We're going to get into that plus more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host here, Hayes, holding it down for the team. Make sure you guys are following the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. So Tevin Jenkins uh, suffered what is an apparent leg injury that could leave him out up to six weeks that is major that's major and it, it, you know yeah we have technically two more weeks of preseason left the bears do have a bye the last week of preseason but with that being said you know that's only two weeks that means that tevin jenkins could possibly miss the first month of the season of if not more when it comes to this injury and so you know it's un, it's unfortunate tevin jenkins who you know has had a a really good rise i like tevin jenkins a lot i've really come kind of far on my on my thoughts on him he was moving over there to the other side of the line as well this week. And so, unfortunately, you know, the fact that he can miss up to six weeks, that's a major injury. And, you know, we, we talked about the continuity on that offensive line. We haven't had uh, much chance to see Nate Davis out there. And so the Bears are, are really not going to have that continuity that Matt Eberflus really wanted out of that offensive uh, line and for the first month of the season. And so, you know, we'll see what happens with Nate Davis. Hopefully he doesn't miss extended time. Matt Eberflus has been consistent in saying everybody's on pace to be there for week one. This is the first injury that we at least know now on paper is de- going to definitely affect the regular season, and this is a big one. So, you know, it's, it's going to have to be, you know, players stepping up uh, in his absence. And when you look at the play of J. Tyree Carter, uh, Alex Leatherwood as well, it's going to be likely one of them who's going to step up into the starting role of guards, Tevin Jenkins. And so, you know, Alex Leatherwood, who's had a pretty solid outing, I, I think Alex Leatherwood has played pretty well so far in preseason. Uh, I kind of personally give him the inside edge to kind of come out with that starting position, but do not overlook J. Tyree Carter. I know that he's had he had up and down season last year, but the Bears have been really consistent in how they view him when it's all said and done. Um, another option that the Bears could absolutely look at as well, they could look to go out and get a veteran to kind of plug that hole while Tevin Jenkins is going to be gone. You have a vet- veteran like uh, Dalton uh, Riz- Risner who's out there as well, Who uh, and then you know with the Bears being first on the waiver wire as well, they can wait and take a look at, you know, when when teams make their cuts, if there's any guards out there that they like that they think is starting level. But I think they're going to kind of bet on either Carter or Leatherwood to really step into that role. Um, and the Bears also could pe- place Tevin Jenkins on the uh, injured reserve as well um, when the rosters are finalized. And, you know, that means that he's just going to miss four games for sure at that point. And so, you know, yeah, it's unfortunate. Like, this is this is not the news that we wanted to hear for the Chicago Bears going into the season. And I've, I've been, you know, talking about how I really wanted this team to be fully healthy, how important it was for this team to start off fully healthy and see what we have out there. Now, we ha- still have some depth there. Like I said, I, I feel pretty conf- confident in Leatherwood if he does move in. And not to say I don't feel confident about Carter as well. I think, you know, both these guys know the playbook. Uh, they've, they've performed pretty well, right? Not, Of course, not at the level that you expect to get from Tevin Jenkins, who is your starter, but they've, they've performed pretty well. And Alex Leatherwood, his rookie year as well, looked really good with the Raiders. So if he does move into that, kind of have that expectation around him. Hasn't really shown a huge hell of a lot since he's become a Chicago Bear, but at least there's that thought there, and then we can see what the Bears can do in that case. Let me know what you guys think down below. How big of a hit do you think this is to the Chicago Bears? Missing Tevin Jenkins for possibly the first month, if not more, of the season, depending on how that health goes. And then who do you think should start in this place? Do you think it should be Jitari Carter? Do you think it should be Alex Leatherwood? Let me know what you guys think on that down below all right let's go ahead and move into the next one um so i want to talk about this topic right I, and, and this is this is kind of a, a, a multi-fold topic i was going to say two-fold but i think it's more than that i think when you look at the fact that khalil herbert played every snap with justin fields uh with, since justin fields any time that justin fields played in preseason i think when you also look at the fact that uh khalil herbert was sat with the rest of the starters um both dante foreman and roshan johnson both played right uh dante foreman getting the start in the game against the indianapolis colts I think we're, we're we're starting to see the pecking order in that running back room. I think that uh, Khalil Herbert's the clear-cut number one at this point. I don't think that that's a question anymore, even though I know my co-host C-Dub is still holding out hope that Roshan may have a chance to eke out that number that running back one position. I don't necessarily see it's in the future. I think the Bears see Khalil Herbert as their number one running back. 
And yeah, that's not to say that he's perfect. He's not. He still has some pass blocking issues as well. Him being utilized in the pass game leaves a little bit to be desired as well. He's not the perfect running back. I don't think we have right now a perfect running back on the roster, even though I think Roshan Johnson may end up being one of that way as his progression goes on. But when it's when it's said and done, I think that this Bears team sees Khalil Herbert as their clear-cut number one running back. And I think that now, as Roshan Johnson has moved up the depth chart, is now brought into question who's actually going to be that running back one. I kind of came into the season expecting it to be Dante Foreman. Uh, and then, you know, Roshan Johnson, you know, getting some snaps, maybe being used in some specialty lineups um, at times like that. And then they were going to bring him along slowly. But it seems like they are tr- starting to trust Roshan Johnson more and more. And I would not be surprised if in the third preseason game, Roshan Johnson actually gets the start to take a look at what he looks like out there. Um, but, you know, when you look at how they've used Roshan, when you look at how many snaps he's gotten compared to even Dante Foreman, there's kind of a, a, a two different mindsets you could have on it, right? You can absolutely take the perspective of, hey, they know Dante Foreman is going to be relied on heavily. They trust him, so they're not going to play him too much in preseason. Why risk it? There could also be a chance of, hey, we're looking at Roshan. We like what we see in him. We think we got a heck of a player in him, and we're going to give him an opportunity. And so that's kind of the two forward mindset in it. Dante Foreman, I think, has had a total of like four or five uh, uh, carries the whole entire preseason. Roshan Johnson has more than him in the one preseason, in one preseason game than what Dante Foreman has gotten in, in two. And when you factor in the fact that Roshan got another seven in the second preseason game, I think this, the writing's on the wall that the Bears are starting to consider maybe looking at Roshan Johnson as being that running back too. When you look at what he offers in the pass protection, how he views the game, being a former quarterback, right? Especially how creative Luke Getzey wants to get in that offense, how he's utilized in the passing game, and he's a solid pass blocker as well. Roshan Johnson has all the tools to be a nice compliment back to Khalil Herbert, and maybe, just maybe, the Bears aren't as impressed with Dante Foreman as what they expected to be when they when they signed him. Now, again, I'm not trying to cause any rumors or start anything here. That's not what we do here. But I am evaluating what we've seen on the field by the Chicago Bears, and there's enough to say you have to look at why is Roshan getting all these opportunities while a player like Dante Foreman just isn't. And like I said, I've presented both both sides of the coin, which I like to do when I talk about things, is present both the good and the bad, right? They could just not be that impressed or he could not be living up to those expectations, or they could know, no, we're absolutely going to give him the second most carries, so why are we going to even give him a lot of time in preseason? That's what it could, it could be either one of those, right? But I think when you look at Roshan and the ascent that he's been on, Roshan looks good. He has, so far, 19 rushes in preseason for 76 yards. While that's not anything that you're singing home about, right? But it's more than the stats. It's what he looks like in pass protection as well. How he how he can operate as a pass catcher. And he's even operating in special teams as well. The vision, the way he moves, how he goes about the game, the methodical way, and the power that he can bring as well. Listen, I tell you what, Dante Foreman brings his own, right? And I think that Dante Foreman is a power back and is a damn good back. I still look at Dante Foreman like that. But Roshan Johnson has a combination of all those things. And he brings the power that Foreman has, theoretically, as well. Yes, he's not a veteran, so hopefully that Dante Foreman is a little bit advanced in him in some things. But listen, when it comes down to it, if all players are healthy, Roshan Johnson may absolutely be moving his way up that depth chart, which he already moved up some, right? We know that for a fact. But he could continue to be growing that way. And if that happens, and I tell you what, uh, listen, I already said it. Roshan Johnson isn't the running back one now, and he probably won't be this season. But he's destined to be the running back one for the Chicago Bears at some point in time. Let me know what you guys think on that. How do you feel about the Dante Foreman, Roshan Johnson? Do you think like me, or starting to think like me, that Roshan could eke out that running back two position and get that out right? Let me know what you guys think. Now, I also want to talk about another player that's really shined a lot, and that is Terrell Lewis. Terrell Lewis has looked so good in preseason so far. I don't even think that it's a question if he's going to make the roster. If anybody did have that question, I think the biggest question is, is, hey, Terrell Lewis may break out this season. And when, I, I didn't expect Terrell Lewis. I didn't realize how young Terrell Lewis was at still only being 25 years old. Listen to what I'm saying. Terrell Lewis, especially if he ekes out that position, over at Travis Gibson, and this may be why. And Travis Gibson didn't look as good in, in the second, uh, and Terrell Lewis, I'm sorry, is actually 24. 
Uh, Travis Gibson didn't shine as well as he did in the first preseason game in the second. But that's you know, He didn't play as many snaps either. But Terrell Lewis, the versatility in which they can use him in, the fact that he's played linebacker, the fact that he can be moved to that defensive end position, there's a lot to say with Terrell Lewis. And Ryan Poles may have yet again. Did, this guy has three sacks in preseason. Keep in mind how much we needed pressure on the quarterback last season. Terrell Lewis, when you also factor in having a unique Ngakwe on the other side of him potentially, listen, Terrell Lewis is making that defensive line even more interesting than what it was shaped up to be. And that's not that's already what's saying Javon Dexter and Zach Pickens look well ahead of schedule. Terrell Lewis gives you a guy who's still young, 24 years old. Keep in mind now, I'm not saying that Travis Gibson is is this could potentially keep him from making the roster because I think when you look at unique Ngakwe, uh, as a one-year signing, you want to keep both probably him and Travis Gibson if they're both playing well in preseason. You want probably both of them to hold on to their spots because, listen, we don't know. Yannick Ngakwe could not be long for the Chicago Bears. It could be one and done. And when you look at Travis Gibson and the fact that he also is only 26 years old and he's been a Bear, you may want to continue to develop that, right, and bring him in there, especially if he's, you know, going. He's got one sack in preseason. He's gotten a lot of QB pressures and hits as well, so you don't want to overlook that. But I do think that Terrell Lewis, if you're looking at anybody who may be the shock and surprise for the Chicago Bears season on that defensive side, and that's to say, we already know what um, we already know what uh, what Unique and Gogwe can bring, right? We already know what we have in in Javon Dexter, Zach Pickens, like we, we drafted those guys, right? So we expect them to to perform. Tariq Stevenson, we understand what he's going to be moving into a starting lineup uh, in his rookie season. But Terrell Lewis, nobody had Terrell Lewis as one of the guys who could make the biggest impacts on the Chicago Bears when this se- when this preseason started. Throughout training camp, throughout everything, we keep hearing Terrell Lewis's name. And because of that, I do think that Terrell Lewis can be a huge breakout candidate when it comes down to it. And so let's see what ends up sh- shaking out from that. I-, I-, I feel pretty confident in that. And then so when you also look at the fact that we've talked a little bit about the offensive line in regards to Tevin Jenkins and his uh, injury, but I also want to look at the fact that Doug Kramer and Jay Tyree Carter both have really been growing quite a bit, right? Quite a bit. And you look at the fact that they are they were drafted here by the Chicago Bears. Doug Kramer, who had injuries, is really, you know, growing and ascending as well. We could still look back at not even just this past draft by Ryan Poles and, and realize what he did for the future of the Bears. We're still not even completely getting everything that we're going to get out of last year's draft picks as well in that class. And so, listen, I like what both these guys, Doug Kramer for real, is he has a chance to really come up into that center position. And when we look at Cody Whitehair and the fact that Cody Whitehair is banged up as well, Doug Kramer's been getting a lot of opportunities, and he could be that that starting center for a while for the Chicago Bears when it's all said and done. And so J. Tyree Carter, I think, is always going to be used as a depth piece because the Bears really use him all up and down that offensive line. You know, I know not every Bears fan is as enamored with Cody Whitehair because of how he performed last season and, you know, things and issues with health and stuff like that. But Doug Kramer is in the wings, and he's showing, hey, don't forget about me. I'm still here. And he's starting to look like he really does, you know, has grown so much from his rookie season after missing so much of that with injury. And so, listen, Doug Kramer is turning heads as well. I like going back. And kind of during the game, it's always hard for me. Not, not always, right? But it doesn't always stand out as much. I like to go back after the fact and really look at specifically what some of the offensive linemen are doing. Doug Kramer, Kramer's playing really good and maybe living up to that potential that the Bears saw in him at one point in time. Another player that I do think is starting to show that, and I think he's going to make the roster over EQ St. Brown if it, if, it, if it comes down to that, Dante Pettis. Listen, I did not come into the season very high on Dante Pettis at all. I, I just want to be clear with that. I was not high on Dante Pettis. So, and I'm not like through the world with him at all either, but I think when you look at the fact of how he can be used in special teams, right, the fact that he has had some injuries, things like that, I do think that Dante Pettis is going to be on the roster for this season. I didn't necessarily think that coming into this uh, season. I thought that uh, Dante Pettis was somebody that I was looking at. It's probably like, it's not going to be, especially as you heard about the scent of Tyler Scott and things like that. I didn't really expect him to make it, but Everything's going and pointing in that way that Dante Pettis is looking pretty damn good out there, right? Like I said, I, I want to put it in perspective. I'm not trying to say like he's like looked like this all world or amazing or anything like that, but like when you look at somebody potentially being your fifth uh, uh, wide receiver down that depth chart, they're still going to get quite a bit of snaps. But I like the way that he's performed. I like what he's given us so far as well. And then the lastly, just to talk about another one, 
Um, Elijah Hicks, listen, a former seventh uh, round pick, Elijah Hicks is coming to the Chicago Bears roster, and he, listen, he played a lot last year on special teams, and he 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 made the team because of that. Um, injuries though have put him in a place where he is playing more, and he's really learning pretty well. And I think that you know this is where where you don't want to always write the story on players too early into their career. When you look at the fact of he started last week for Eddie Jackson, and then um, you know the fact that it, uh, that that Hicks and AJ Thomas played pretty well as uh, as well early, and he got pulled out of the game early. On top of that, the Chicago Bears really do see something in Elijah Hicks as well, and I think that that's warranted. I like what I, Elijah Hicks has brought. I like the growth that he potentially has here. I like how he can be a compliment to Eddie Jackson and Jaquan Brisker as well. So because of that. I'm really looking at Elijah Hicks to not really make a huge impact, right, to where you're looking at him and saying, oh, my God, this guy's just amazing. But pay attention to the snaps that Hicks plays. Pay attention to when you see his jersey number out there. Pay attention to how he operates in coverage and how he's a pretty damn good tackler, right, and doesn't miss tackles too often. Elijah Hicks is really growing as well. He's another player that I do think is going to make the Chicago Bears roster, the 53-man roster, that I didn't necessarily think that coming into the season. Let me know what you guys think on all that down below. That's it for today's daily episode. Uh, make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearcentralgmail.com. Then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag episodes that go down on Fridays and Saturdays, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on. Shy Town up, bear down, love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break.